Hey, I'm Ray Latif. I'm here with John Craven. We're at the 2016 Expo East show here in Baltimore, Maryland. John, how are you? Delightful. <laughs> it's been a kind of a, a busy show, one of the busier Expo Easts I've been to. I mean, it's definitely the busiest one that I've ever been to. I think there were a lot of years where companies were constantly telling us, oh, they're not going to do it next year, getting yeah. a smaller booth. Um, I think I only heard that once the entire time we were here. You know, it's noticeably a bigger show booths and places that you know there weren't in the past and a lot more people I think so yeah it definitely feels like there's more people uh, visiting the exhibitors but just the number of exhibitors here um, not just food brands I mean obviously there's a lot of food brands but the beverage brands that are exhibiting um, it's, it's it's a lot more than I was expecting and uh, everyone seems to be happy with uh, with the show so far um, but you know we should get to the biggest category that we've seen we've been talking about this for months Exhibited here at the show, and it seems like everywhere in the country, cold brew coffee is just, I mean, there's 25 exhibitors here that are all kind of marketing their own products. And even though, you know, we've talked about coffee itself being something that, you know, it's pretty difficult to, um, to showcase a different flavor for, for, for cold brew coffee, people are attempting to do it in terms of packages, uh, labels, and some blends as well. Yeah, I mean, it seems like people are trying to carve out niches in all different places, be it you know, some of them are regional specific. Um, you've got dairy, non-dairy flavors, you know, unflavored, concentrate, ready to drink. I mean, it's interesting just to see how all of these brands are kind of putting, you know, the pieces together differently. Um, you know, there are certainly plenty out there that are still just, you know, kind of doing the same thing. But I think the ones that we saw at the show largely, you know, recognize that the, the space is crowded and that they need to have some point of differentiation to succeed. And I think we sound like broken records talking about this stuff, but um, you know, I think it's impressive like how fast it has really gotten to this point too. Right. And I've asked about different points of differentiation. We've seen a couple of brands do HPP. We've seen a couple of folks focus on direct trade coffee uh, beans and things like that. Some people are doing uh, multi-serve concentrate and just no single serve. Others are doing just single serve, and you know, everyone's just trying to find their own way at this point and. I mean, the good news is the quality seems to be there with all these products. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I think with uh, some of this stuff, it's really figuring out what innovation and differentiation is actually meaningful. I right. mean, I think some of the flavors that are out there for some of these companies are kind of stretching it a bit. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like we constantly hear, you know, that such and such process, whatever, you know, the given company is using is like the right way to do it. Right. A lot of times I feel like we're hearing, you know, things that seem like, to us and we're not you know coffee experts by any means but kind of splitting hairs you know a 10 hour versus a 12 hour process um i think someone told me there was one that was a 10 minute cold brew or something but uh you know i think a lot of it is sort of nuanced differences yeah i mean the other big category that we've seen that hadn't necessarily been as prominent at this show in years past is kombucha um i'd say anywhere between 10 and 15 brands are represented here at the show yeah, and I think it's something that if there's any, you know, category in this space that's getting influenced by craft beer, it's certainly kombucha. Right. You know, just even looking at the booths for a lot of these companies, they have that kind of like, you know, almost like beer, uh, beer, beer brewery sort of like, you know, vibe to them. Uh, lots of wood and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of, you know, stuff on tap. And I think, you know, as far as going national, um, I mean, at this point, it seems like only a few of those brands have aspirations of that, right? Right. So I think that's another one where, you know, you have all these different kind of ways that people are putting the pieces together. Um, I think with kombucha, just given its uniqueness, it's a little harder to really tell, you know, which way is the right path. Um, certainly, you know, brands like Health Aid and Revive that, again, have national aspirations like I think that's pretty understandable as a beverage guy. Um, but it was neat to see some of the regional players like Bucci and Lenny Boy um, from the Southeast, for example. So. You know, and the demand for, consu for kombucha, for consumer demand from kombucha, seems to be growing really rapidly all over the country. We talked to the, uh, the folks from Health Aid who had told us that um, kombucha was the fastest growing beverage category over the last five years. Um, and it's particularly growing faster on the East Coast, which makes a lot of sense for this show. You know, kombucha is one that I think people have often asked, you know, what's sort of the end game for it, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, certainly with, um, you know, Health Aid and First Beverage uh, having an investment in that, um, I think that sort of legitimized it a little bit. But I think that is something that, you know, a lot of people who sort of look at more traditional beverage categories, here's this thing that kind of tastes like vinegar and 
is a real kind of acquired taste. Um, you know, what is the end game for it? But I think we're going to start, you know, seeing how that shakes out pretty soon. Now, the hottest category for probably the last couple of years has always been cold pressed juice. Um, seems to have uh, slowed down in terms of the number of exhibitors here at this show. Um, but cold brew, I'm sorry, cold pressed juice companies are still innovating um, quite a bit and trying to stand out. You know, the biggest uh, is obviously Suja. Um, they're not necessarily doing more juice, but they came out with a new line of drinking vinegars that seems to uh, be pretty on trend. Um, we also saw Evolution Fresh, uh, which is going to be introducing a new line of superfoods uh, drinks that really focus on uh, different interesting ingredients that are also focused on uh, addressing consumer demand for lower sugar products. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that I think we've talked about this before, but sort of the core, you know, that core reason that cold pressed juice started, mm -hmm. um, which was the whole sort of pitch of it being more nutrient dense and better than a pasteurized juice, that's sort of gone away, right? right. And at this point, it sort of shifted into more about being, you know, an organic and just general kind of good for you offering. And I mean, that's exactly what, you know, Suja and Daily Greens have done. And it's visible in their line extensions here at the show. Yeah, um, Daily Greens had a really interesting one with their Green Aid products, which are sort of lemonade uh, inspired products. They came out with five SKUs. They all taste really good. Some really interesting ingredients in those as well. The, the first ever blue colored beverage that I'll actually drink. It's a neon colored organic beverage, which is pretty awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. But I think, you know, aside from that, we saw a bunch of those brands doing shots, which mm -hmm. is something that. I think we're going to continue to see more of certainly, you know, it helps get the price point down. It's creating, you know, sort of a new experience for the consumer. Right. I mean, they all seem pretty bullish on it and pretty clear that even the ones that don't have it yet are working on it. So that's right. Uh, we saw Saratoga uh, Juice Company, which is a smaller cold press juice brand out of New York, um, talk about their uh, brand extension into shots and how uh, on fire it was even from the, you know, from the get go. Um, Temple Turmeric has right, extended extending their. It, yeah. Uh, shot base or shot based products as well. Core shots, which is um, done really well out in the West Coast in Southern California, um, coming out with their uh, or trying to find better ways to merchandise their product. And what we're seeing a lot of companies do is introduce sliders that they can um, they can better represent their products and not just have them kind of falling all over the place on the shelf. Yeah, I mean the retail side of things for those is pretty challenging. I think. Um, but it also has an interesting opportunity just, you know, talking to a bunch of those companies, Temple and uh, Saratoga, you know, I think the opportunity for kind of that multi-pack, which really doesn't exist at all in regular cold pressed juice is, I think, a unique one as well. Yeah, you know, and then we saw on the uh, the alt alternative dairy category, the dairy alternative category, we saw a few new products. Ones that stood out for me was Numu. Um, they've got that interesting multi-serve product that's coming out as well, and they did a little bit of a rebrand with new labels. And that uh, edamame, uh, edamame milk soy thing. milk. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty stuff. interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then we saw just you know the other uh, the other stalwarts or relatively new stalwarts that is, um, New Barn. Um, Ripple, which, you know, I, I use the word solar, but these brands are at least, uh, you know, they have that kind of presence where it feels like they are real brands at this sure. point, real established brands. Well, and you have Calafia Farms, who's, sure. you know, kind of go going back to our original uh, topic of cold brew, too. Yeah. You know, they're extending just in a straight cold brew, uh, which I think is a pretty interesting shift for their company, just kind of, you know, really putting their money where their mouth is about being a coffee company, too. Yeah. Interesting to see how much emphasis they have put on coffee over the last year, year and a half. One of the other interesting things about this show is to see the number of enhanced waters um, that, or enhanced water brands that are exhibiting. Uh, you know, it felt like enhanced waters or functional first waters were something that kind of fell off over the last couple of years, but now you're seeing ones that are infused with very specific functions, very specific ingredients that aren't necessarily um, plant-based, that are more just vitamin enhanced, vitamin infused. Um, and it's just interesting to see the opportunity that these folks think they have. Yeah, I think it's something that, you know, a lot of these products don't fit into a specific category, which is somewhat of their challenge. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, at least at this point, there's maybe a bigger pool of those companies, which might make a kind of category by definition of that um, yeah. or virtue of that. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to really, you know, put your finger on any one of those and say it stands out but i think it's you know again interesting that those companies are seeing you know the natural channel in this show is a place to you know basically get the word out so yeah are we are we about to see another wave of water vitamin water uh 
2.0s or 3.0s? I mean, I mean that's always the criticism of those products, right? And I think, you know, the ones now that are out there actually have, you know, kind of specific function and seem like they can speak to it and back it up as opposed to, you know, vitamin water kind of crossing a lot of different things, but at a surface level, right? So I don't know. I'm honestly, uh, I guess, wait and see for me. But yeah, me too. All right. Well, that wraps up our coverage of uh, Expo East 2016. Uh, that's video coverage, that is. But we have lots more in terms of uh, print, online, podcasts. So stay tuned. And uh, thanks so much for watching.